Hey all, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna try to answer the question, is MySQL actually free? And when you need a commercial license, AKA not free. So I recently wrote why you should probably just use Postgres for your next web app. And I listed several reasons why I believe Postgres is often a better choice than MySQL, including performance, reliability, and flexibility through its ecosystem of plugins. I also briefly mentioned that MySQL is owned by Oracle, which has a spotty track record for licensing arbitration. And I've gotten some questions and pushback on this. So here I wanted to explore this a bit further to add some clarity. And so in this post, we'll talk about the history of MySQL and Oracle and which cases you can use MySQL for free and whether you should actually care about this licensing stuff or not. Now, before I go into this, I need to provide a disclaimer. I am not a lawyer. I'm just a random guy on the internet that likes to write about things. And this is not legal or business or systems advice. It really is just my opinion based on my understanding of things. And so it is very possible that I'm just flat out wrong. And so you need to do your own research. Please don't go and use this information to do anything with it. Um, and also please don't sue me. So with that disclaimer out of the way, we can get on to the post. So first let's talk about MySQL and Oracle. So MySQL is the second most popular database technology according to Stack Overflow's 2024 dev survey. And we can see it here, MySQL is coming in second place with 40.3% of usage according to the survey. Postgres is first with 48.7, and then we see SQLite in third with 33.1, SQL Server 25.3, and Mongo with 24.8. So this is the top five most popular databases, at least according to these survey respondents. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but Oracle did acquire MySQL in 2010 and currently runs it under a dual licensing contract, which we'll talk about in a minute. Also, I wanted to call out that at the same time, one of the creators of MySQL, Monty Widenius started MariaDB as an open source only version of this. So it was a fork of MySQL, um, although it also has commercial versions available as of today. And so really important part here is that Oracle has owned MySQL and kind of been in control of its licensing um, for, you know, almost 15 years now. Okay, so on to the important question, which is, can you use MySQL for free? And the answer is, it depends. So MySQL is open source under GPL, which is the general public license, but there also exist commercial licenses for uses that don't abide by GPL. And this usually applies when you're distributing software without it also being GPL open source. So if you're distributing software that's under a different license, even if it's open source, if you are distributing license that is not open source, um, these usually will not abide by GPL. And so these commercial licenses come in various flavors for MySQL. And the idea is that one license allows you to use MySQL on one computer. So this is copied verbatim from their licensing page. It says, what is the definition of a server? It's defined as the computer on which the programs are installed. A server license allows you to use the license program on a single specified computer. And I think this is important because like, this licensing cost is pretty expensive, right? So these are basically showing um, the license for one computer for one year. And we can see that, you know, for the standard edition, it's anywhere between $2,000 and $4,000 a year, depending on sockets. For the enterprise edition, we've got five to $10,000 a year, depending on sockets. And then if you go up to this, you know, cluster version, it's 10 to 20K. I um, mean, those are just the starting prices. And so pretty expensive. And so you probably, you know, don't want to get this wrong. Obviously, if you're like a big hyperscale company, these costs are like meaningless um, because they're like less than a developer. But I think if you're like a small shop, especially like, you know, a solar dev who's building a side project, like this would, you know, kill your, your whole business right here. Okay, so when can you use MySQL for free and when do you need to purchase one of these licenses? So basically, if you're using MySQL as a database for your web app, then this is free. So you can use MySQL as a database for your web app for free because you are not distributing MySQL yourself. You're just using it. And this is probably the most common use case of MySQL. So if you're doing this, you should be good. This falls squarely in GPL fair use and really is the whole point of open source to make it freely available to the end users. So as long as MySQL remains inside of your own infrastructure and you don't distribute it, it should be free. And this is how like most web apps are made. You know, you have like your infra, you have your backend, you'll have your web server and then requests come into the backend and hit your database. And since that end database is really just used by you, um, you are the end user of it, then this should be fine. 
Okay, now onto the other use case, which is distributing MySQL with your application. And here it depends. This is where things get a bit more tricky. And I had to think of like use cases of this because it's not normal. I'm usually like a web app developer. So I do a lot of like web-based backends and some front ends. And so I don't usually build apps this way, but um, here's some examples of this that I could think of that would probably fall under this uh, use case. And so examples of this are like native desktop apps or mobile apps where you are distributing your, you know, software package or binary to another end user. And maybe you're using MySQL internally for storage and therefore you are distributing that MySQL. Um, this would probably fall under it. Other cases of this are like, you know, Internet of Things or on-prem SaaS, same idea where like you're distributing a software package that includes MySQL with it in order to function. This would probably fall under this. And I think there's some rules around like if it only works on MySQL or not. So even if they install MySQL themselves, if your thing only runs on MySQL versus like also allowing Postgres or SQL Server and stuff like that, um, then this might also fall under these restrictions. And then another use case, which I've never thought of because, you know, I've never like built my own cloud service is managed databases where like an end user can ask you to set up a MySQL for them. Like theoretically, you're the end user, it's still in your own infra, but because you are provisioning this for someone else, I feel like this could maybe fall under the, you know, legal terms of distributing. So I would say this is probably a gray area at risk for this, but you know, I, I don't know, I'm not a lawyer. And so these are all examples of like, probably distributing MySQL to someone else. And whether this requires a commercial license or not seems to really depend on whether or on what the license is that you're distributing your code or your system under. And so if your system is GPL licensed open source, then this does not need a license. But remember, this is like a very specific license for open source, and it means that all of your code must be open source. And if your system is any other license, and this includes closed, closed source, which is like most mobile apps I would expect to have to be closed source, um, you do need a license for this because it does not follow GPL. And so this seems to mean that if you are distributing a system that includes MySQL as part of its installation or function, and it's not open sourced and specifically open sourced with GPL, then you do need one of these commercial licenses. Okay, so should you care about these licensing requirements? So generally, it seems for most web app use cases, you should be good. MySQL is released under GPL, so you can use it yourself as the end user pretty freely. Where you need to be a bit careful is if you have a use case where you're going to be distributing MySQL itself to other end users. And again, this will probably be on-prem B2B SaaS or native mobile apps, but there's probably some gray area around this stuff. And even if you're distributing your stuff for free, if the code itself is not open source, then you could be at risk because technically this doesn't follow GPL. And I think this is probably a pretty big risk for like, you know, people with a lot of side projects like me who we don't make money off these projects, but like we're also not open sourcing the code, um, often just for like security and headache issues. Even if you're like providing these things for free, if you're doing this distribution stuff, you're still at risk of needing to, to pay for the license, which is kind of awful. And so if you are doing this latter use case, you might want to consider some alternatives that provide MySQL-like features without the scary licenses, especially if you're not making much revenue off this stuff. Um, and so some examples that I've seen recommended around are like MariaDB, which is that fork I, I talked about earlier from MySQL. Although if you look closely, it seems to follow the same MySQL commercial license um, as well, kind of pointing you to go buy an Oracle commercial license if you're doing this. So this might not actually work. Um, Persona Server, which is also a fork of MySQL, seems to be a bit more lenient under a Creative Commons license. Although again, there might be some peculiarities if you're using MySQL itself there. I would say that SQLite is arguably a much better use case for this embedded system use case. So like very common to run um, versions of SQLite that are very light, but still performance. So this is a very common choice for mobile apps. And so if you need this local storage and this kind of like SQLite lookup, I would probably just go for SQLite for mobile and native, um, and even maybe some versions of things that you're installing, maybe like IoT appliances would work well for this. Maybe in clouds, although with clouds, you have like, you know, a lot more compute and storage that you can use. So you could probably go for a bigger DB there. And so if you are gonna do like a big DB like MySQL, um, then you might as well probably use the best database, which is just gonna be Postgres. And so if you wanna avoid these scary licenses and get even more power 
flexibility, reliability, you know, just use Postgres. Now in the end, if Oracle never finds out that you're misusing the license, then I suppose this doesn't matter, but like I personally wouldn't test it. Oracle is infamously litigious. And so I've just taken like a few articles of this from around the web to put them in one place just so we have it for like, you know, posterity. And so since 2019, Oracle has flip-flopped on Java's commercial licenses. Remember, Oracle also owns Java. Um, and they're currently requiring a paid license to get security updates, which is kind of interesting um, since security updates are kind of like super important for anyone actually using this stuff. Um, and yes, they seem to be coming after orgs using Java, often using Java downloads to trace orgs using it. So they seem to be um, you know, able to find you people that are misusing their license. This 2021 20, post also lists Oracle licensing litigation, including coming after customers for not using enough licenses of their Oracle DB, not having the correct license for Oracle DB, and mentions some potentially concerning licensing rules um, that using their software apparently gives them these freedoms. Here's a direct quote, even companies that have not contracted directly with Oracle are not immune to lawsuits brought by Oracle to enforce their copyrights. And so if you are using the software and you know, you're providing the service to your customers, you might be putting your customers at risk of litigation, even though um, they're not the ones that's misusing it, which seems like you know, probably concerning to your end users as well if they find this out. Next. So should you use MySQL for your application? I think it's a decent choice. So if that's what you want to use, then go for it. Just be careful you're not accidentally distributing MySQL along with it because this has like a whole mess of, you know, licensing issues involved. Now, personally, I find all this legal licensing stuff pretty confusing and annoying and scary and feel there are just better options out there. So I prefer to just use Postgres, but you know, teach their own. Now, if you like this post, you might also like Postgres over everything. Why you should probably just use Postgres for your next web app. Might also be interested in how I host my server side rendered F sharp site on Google Cloud for less than $1 per month. And finally, the Hamstack, a simple scalable tech stack for building modern web apps fast and cheap. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.